There's another type of transport that cells can make use of, and it's called active transport. So the big difference here, you might be able to guess, um, active transport, this is a type of transport that requires energy in some form. We're gonna talk about energy in just a second. In the context of cells, a lot of times active transport will involve a protein embedded in the membrane. So remember the plasma membrane has all these proteins embedded in it. Some of those proteins act like pumps. They can actually take a molecule from one side of the plasma membrane and pull it over to the other side of the plasma membrane. So they're acting like a pump. And pumps require energy in order to function. So this is an example of the cell needing energy in order to power some process. A lot of times, this is used to move molecules against their concentration gradient. Okay, so moving it from a um, maybe the, the cell is trying to store something valuable, okay, so maybe um, there's not very much of it in the surroundings, but when the cell comes across one of those molecules, it wants to bring it inside and store it. Okay, so that might actually be a case where the molecule is moving up its concentration gradient, so kind of just the opposite of what diffusion accomplishes. Um, so that's, that's a situation that would take some energy in order to accomplish that. So energy, energy to do work. What do we mean when we talk about energy? Energy can be defined, this is not just in the context of biology, but this is a general definition for energy. Energy is the capacity to cause some sort of change, or um, you might have heard this stated, the capacity to do work. Okay, so energy, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of like having an ability to do something. Energy comes in different forms. There are lots of different forms that energy might be found in. A couple of examples that you may or may not have heard of before, uh, depending on your background. Okay, kinetic energy. This is the type of energy associated with moving objects. This is the energy of motion. So for example, if you throw a ball, as the ball is flying through the air, we would say that that ball has kinetic energy. It's got, uh, it's got motion, therefore it's got some energy tied to its motion. In the context of molecules, um, simply talking about heat, heat is an example of kinetic energy. What, we, what we're doing when we heat up uh, molecules is causing them to bounce into each other quicker. They're vibrating more quickly, kind of moving around in whatever solution we're talking about. Um, and that's a type of kinetic energy. Another major form of energy is what we would call potential energy. And this is an energy that's due to location or structure. A good example of this would be, uh, let's go back to the ball. If there is a ball sitting on the top of a hill, Okay, it's just sitting there, it's not actually moving, it's sitting on the top of the hill. It has some potential, right? If somebody comes along and just gives it a little bit of a nudge, it's gonna start rolling down the hill and then it would have kinetic energy. Okay, so while it's holding still on the top of the hill, it has potential energy. As soon as it is moving, then it would have kinetic energy. So the interesting thing there is that we can notice energy can actually be converted from one form to another. Okay, so that's another property of energy. Potential energy, there are a few different types. What I was describing with the ball is gravitational potential energy. That's an energy due to position. In the context of molecules, uh, which is what we'll mostly be dealing with, Chemical energy is a type of potential energy. And what this is referring to is the energy that's stored in the bonds of molecules. So between atoms, um, the connection between atoms that involves electrons, there's a type of potential energy stored right there. And we're gonna be elaborating on that type of energy in just a second. Anytime that energy does get converted from one form to another, uh, something happens, we say that the entropy of the surroundings increases. So when we do energy conversions, we increase entropy. Uh, what is entropy? Entropy is basically a measure of how disordered things are, so how messy things are. And in the context of energy, um, usually when we carry out an energy conversion, what happens is a little bit of, of heat is generated and it goes off into the surroundings and it makes the molecules in the surroundings wiggle a little bit more and sort of spread out, become more disordered. So we increase the entropy of the surroundings each time we do an energy conversion. 
What I'd like to do next is give you an example of an energy conversion. We're going to start with a familiar example and then we'll move into the context of cells a little bit more. Okay, so the familiar example, uh, we're going to talk about cars for just a second here. Okay, so what do cars run on? Um, most cars. <laughs> most cars run on gasoline. So we're not talking about electric vehicles, but let's consider an old-fashioned combustion engine car like, like most of us still have uh, today. Okay, so um, in your car, you probably have to fill it up on occasion. You have to give it some gasoline. And then in order for the car to run, in order for it to actually go somewhere, what happens is a little bit of that gasoline is combusted. So we have combustion engines in our car. What the combustion engine does is it breaks down some of the gasoline molecules and that reaction requires some oxygen. Okay, so by combusting the gasoline, what we do is actually convert some of this chemical energy into kinetic energy. This is what makes our car move. In the process of doing that, we also generate some heat. So this increases the entropy of the surroundings, the air surrounding your car. The waste product from all of this is pretty simple, carbon dioxide and water. These would be the waste products. They just kind of diffuse out into the atmosphere surrounding your car. Now let's talk about cells. Cells have surprising similarities with this car example that I just showed you. So what's going on inside of a cell? When a cell carries out its processes, uh, it uses a fuel molecule, okay? but instead of gasoline, what is the fuel molecule that cells use? It's glucose. It's a carbohydrate. Okay? So glucose is going to be like the fuel molecule. And what the cell will do is burn some of this glucose. It requires oxygen in order to do this. Okay, so it, um, it undergoes a process called cellular respiration, which is kind of the equivalent to combustion. Um, okay, so the cell uses its fuel molecule, breaks it down. And as a result of breaking down glucose, the cell is able to produce ATP. This is a molecule that provides energy for the cell. I'll show you what ATP looks like on the next slide. In the process of breaking down glucose, not only do we generate some energy, but we also generate some heat. Okay, so same thing as with the car analogy. In the end, what are the waste products from cellular respiration? It's actually exactly the same, carbon dioxide and water. And you may already know this, when you breathe, okay, what are you breathing out? We're, when we breathe in, we're taking in oxygen, right? Taking in oxygen. And then when we breathe out, you're actually expelling carbon dioxide and water. If you breathe into, like, into your hand, your hand will feel a little bit moist afterwards. That's because there's some water in your breath.